Thanks for coming back and joining me. Today we're going to be doing a lighthouse by C. Um, I'm using Master's Touch watercolor paper. Wait, woo! Master's Touch watercolor paper. Um, I just wanted to uh, wanted to use this paper just because I know a lot of beginners will be using the same style of paper, um, and that's okay. Like you can still get pretty good results with this stuff, even though you know it's it doesn't hold water as well or color as well as some of the more expensive papers like arches and stuff which i'm a big fan of arches don't get me wrong um, but i i kind of wanted to use this just to just to kind of mirror what a lot of you will be doing um, especially as you're practicing and stuff like that uh, but basically we're starting with the outline of the, the lighthouse i'm using a reference um, feel free to use any reference you want but just trying to get the basic shapes um, Nothing too fancy. You're gonna fly through this. We'll see how quickly we can actually do this. And this will also be just in real time, you know. So uh, the one thing I do really like about Master's Touch watercolor paper um, is it actually is a lot easier to draw on with pen. Uh, Arches, fascinatingly enough, is so fine-toothed and so adaptable to water that it's actually hard to draw with pen on, which is unique. Um, whereas this, since it doesn't have such a fine tooth, you can actually see all the lines going through it if you look close enough. Um, this one is a little bit easier to, to get pen onto the paper with. Um, so there are pros and cons, you know, cheaper papers have their uses and they're, they're definitely not something to scoff at. You know, you can, they're great for practicing, great for learning. You don't burn a lot of money. I think this whole watercolor paper uh, booklet that I bought was like literally four bucks versus arches can be upwards of 20 per um, per book you know so I think arches is mainly more for um, like using it for like archival or if you're gonna sell work or if you want it to last a really long time stuff like that um, I kind of like both they're just fun but basically right now we're just blocking out shapes um, trying to keep perspective in check, uh, wanting this this lighthouse to appear like it's sitting higher than us, so a lot of your lines will arch upwards. So it'll kind of create this little half moon, I'll draw it up here, this little half moon shape like this. If it were to flip the other way, then it would look like we were above the lighthouse. Does that make sense? So something like that. But if we're like this, and all the lines are kind of converging upwards, then it feels like we're sitting below the lighthouse, like it's up on a hill or something. So a little bit of perspective, Googling, Perspective practicing it will make your paintings 10 times better. Um, so I advise definitely getting better perspective. Let's see. Got a little door coming in right here. And I'm just getting rough shapes. Like you don't have to be, you know, super, super diligent about all this line work. It's fun when it looks more rough and random and stuff like that. So this is sitting on a hill. No, this is going to come down like this. Yeah, it's looking good. Cool. And we got some lines coming off of this guy. Just loosey goosey fun. You know, nothing crazy or anything like that. And then it goes onto this clip, which sits right at the water, and it kind of comes out like this. Got some rocks, jagged rocks. And then we've got more rock coming off of here. So just defining the shapes. And you can see I'm being super, super loose with this. So you don't have to really be all that accurate with your shapes. You're just trying to get like general gist of it and then create some just characteristic lines that are so common with line and wash stuff, which I love. Some jagged ed edge cliffs. As you notice, my lines are very much going the same way. I'm not doing like differing patterns um, unless the clip is coming down. So you're kind of having to make sure you're uh, matching your lines and that they make sense. And that can create a whole lot of um, cohesiveness within the piece when your lines are all going the same way or the different aspects all line up. Um, that's something to, to definitely be aware of. I wonder if my pen's running out. Might be time to get new pens. Just defining that shoreline, that's good. 
And then out here we've got definitely like a horizon line, so it's overlooking. And I'm not gonna create that as a full line. I don't want it to extend out. I want it to kind of be broken up. Yeah, something like that. It needs to look like it's clear out there. Cool. Okay, now let's start laying down some color. That looks great. Using Windsor Newton, Newton, Windsor Newton brushes. This little palette's pretty affordable, super cheap. Um, great colors. I also use arches quite a bit. Or not arches, um, koi watercolors. Um, they're a little bit more punchy and vibrant, which if that's what you're going for, that's what you're going for. That's great. Um, we're going to start laying color down. Pretty uh, heavy color on the brush. We're going to leave some white spaces for the clouds. But as you can see, this paper, since it's a cheaper paper, you'll start to see the tooth of the paper more than you would on something like arches. So if you can stomach that, these papers can be great. If you can't stomach that, go with the more expensive papers. Typically buying arches online, you can get better deals than if you were to buy it in the store um, on different websites. So ch definitely check those out because you can, uh, usually I'll buy them in like packs of two um, for like the big nine by 12 sheets or something like that. I'm trying to keep all my strokes going the same way and then the sky is going to fade down into that. But I don't want my water to pool on my paper, especially with these cheaper papers. That creates this, what's called cauliflower so when it pools, it's just going to create this weird little, almost like it looks like the color is like a cauliflower pattern. It's really weird. Um, that's just because these cheaper papers don't absorb water as well as their more expensive papers. So you do not want pools of water forming. You're trying to smooth those pools of water out and to avoid them and discourage them from pooling up the water or pulling up the color. That's looking nice though. We're just laying in the sky. It's okay to leave a little bit of white spots and stuff like that. And then as it comes down, it'll slowly fade in. You can be as abstract with the sky as you want or as general with the sky. Like if you want to leave it pretty like not all the way up to the edge, that's totally fine. That looks great. Um, trying to just blend my strokes in so we don't actually see them. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to come back through with just water on my brush and try to pull up some of this stuff. I'm trying to blend it in. So I didn't add any more water on my brush there. I want it to fade in um, towards the shoreline as I, or towards the water as I get there. And that's, you can achieve that by putting some paint on your brush and then slowly letting the paint fall off the brush and only using water and that'll blend it. That's looking good. Trying to hide some of these individual strokes up in here though. Yeah, I really like that. Looks nice. Cool. Okay. And then we're going to come through and do some water. Let's get a bunch of blue, mixing two different blues. Don't know the names, sorry. Um, but we're just going to start by doing that. A very dark blue, you know, seas are generally <laughs> pretty dark. Um, leaving some white spaces for sure, though. You don't want it to be just a block of blue. And it usually gets lighter as it goes out towards that horizon. So you don't want it to be the same color of blue. And I'm just using the very tip of the brush, kind of pulling that across, leaving some, I imagine the sun's kind of hitting right here, so I'm gonna leave a lot more white, kind of right in there, pulling it up right up to that shoreline. Trying to mix this so we don't get that cauliflowering. You can kind of see it start to form. So if you can catch it early enough, you can kind of reverse it, which is good. Bringing that, and it's going to get darker as it comes towards us. So that'll be the most vibrant dark water, the closest to our perspective. And then around the rocks, obviously there will be splashing so leaving a little bit of white can look really good around there maybe just blotching in some color with the tip of our brush trying to get rid of that cauliflower like I said it's looking nice though and then maybe bringing in some more 
that darker color back in here. Even a little bit of white around the, the rocks, like I said. Trying to get all of those individual brush strokes out. I don't want my brush strokes to be super apparent. So, trying to just come back over them while they're still wet. Key with watercolor is if you want to reverse something, it has to still be wet to be able to be workable. Otherwise, it'll be stuck on your paper forever and it's hard to reverse or paint over, I guess. And usually won't happen, at least to your liking. Ooh, that's looking good. Cool. And we can always come back through and add in more dark blues like up here. Try not to let the water pull up or add too much extra water on. Um, I know you'll have some issues. I think arches would be able to handle it better, but that's okay. Cool. Now, shadows on these things will usually be like almost like a bluish gray. And we're imagining the lights hitting the front of this lighthouse that way. So we're just going to bring blue onto this side, like a little bit of grayish blue. Eh, probably more gray than that, actually. And pretty not heavy on that. So just pulling it down. Make sure your pen is dry. I did not. But um, if your pen is not dry, you will definitely smudge it, which can be very, very frustrating. <laughs> so something like that. And then this whole side of this little house is going to be definitely shaded because it's not in direct sunlight. Looking good. And then I think underneath these little awnings should be um, shaded as well. It's looking good. It's got kind of like a little reddish roof, almost like brown red. So we'll do that and come through. Yeah, that's looking good. And then that little roof is actually going to cast a shadow as well, if you can see that. Cool. Now we're going to do some grass with a little bit of browns, so some greens with some browns, and then bring it along here. Keeping my brush strokes going the same way, using like almost the edge of the brush. Don't want it to be a block of color. Remember, you want it to be um, differing tones. So you can even bring some more brown back in. Just brown, mixing it in there. And that'll help give it a little bit of texture too, you know. But I was mixing my brown with my green. So that's how we get that kind of more foresty green instead of straight lime or whatever it will be. But we can bring some of that green back in and mix it in while it's still wet. That's looking really nice. And maybe we'll bring some more of this brown. Right there. Cool. It's looking really good. And then we've got these rocks up in here. This will be mostly brown with some white spaces. So start bringing some color in. A little bit darker as it comes closer to us. I've seen we've got a lot of new faces around here lately. Thanks for joining us. Um, I know I haven't been super diligent with posting. My wife and I just moved to a new place and with work we've been slammed. So I'm going to try to keep posting stuff as much as possible. But I'll try to do something every week, I think because we are getting a lot of momentum from just a bunch of new people, which is awesome. So thank you. Thanks for joining us. It's really fun to see people take a liking to this. You know, I never pictured a lot of people taking interest in my artwork. So that's fun. Hopefully you guys will learn something, bring a little bit of gray into these rocks up here. Yeah, let me know what is helpful to you guys. Um, you know, obviously I've, I've had a lot of people say that they want more full-length tutorials where I'm explaining step-by-step step versus just the time-lapse stuff, which I think makes total sense. So I'll keep doing these 
a little bit longer ones. I'm not being too specific on all this color. I'm just kind of filling in where I think, and then we can come back through and kind of define some stuff. I think I need to actually tone down some of those browns. Just because it looked a little too brown. You know what I'm saying? That's looking good. And this is a super quick, fun way. Just get good results. Um, okay, we're gonna dry the paper, so I'll be right back after I dry it and we'll finish this up. Cool, so now that that's dry, I just used a hair dryer. Um, you can see this cauliflower in here, but for the rocks, I really don't mind. We're actually gonna redefine that shape. Make sure that your paper is dry before you start going back over with pen. Um, otherwise, it will blotch and your pen will leak into every aspect, which is not desirable using a little bit of a thicker pen pentalic um, pens are the pens i use i think they're linked down in the description and i can leave that link for you guys um, they're great illustration pens fairly affordable you don't need top of the line pens to do this stuff you know coming back through just to find a nut um, that cliff Coming back through, not being super specific with my strokes, just trying to like loosely get the idea of these are cliffs. And this is where you can really come in and fine tune your work, you know, give it a little bit more contrast. Um, typically when people give up and get frustrated is right before this step and that you just it's not done. It's like the awkward teenage phase is what I've, I've called it in the past. Um, and you just got to give it a few more good minutes of work before you finally throw in the towel because oftentimes you'll be like super close and then you'll quit too early and you're already basically well on your way there, you know. Just redefine some of these lines. Make sure you follow the same stroke pattern you did before. So you're not trying to redefine all the stuff, adding in some little dots here and there. Coming through and define some of those little ripples. And I love seeing your guys' work. Um, so if you can, I have an Instagram. You guys can share stuff with me or find a way to message it to me because I love seeing it. So I think we're almost done with this. Like super easy to get good, fun results with pen and wash. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time, which is nice. I'm gonna actually add a little coastline in back there. Just some little black blobs. Something like that. Cool. And that's about it for this. So I'm going to pull off the, the um, actually let's sign it first. I always forget to sign. And then, cool. Now let's pull off the tape and see what happens. And that's that. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will see you guys hopefully very soon with some more tutorials. And we'll see you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Thanks.